Local breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. An upstate American Legion building vandalized several times. Tonight, police believe it's the work of a couple of teens, and those teens are in trouble. Also tonight, the arrest of an autistic man renewing calls for more education and training for the police. Good evening. Welcome. I'm Michael Cogdell. And I'm Carol Goldsmith. Guns confiscated, three teens in custody. Tonight, new details on a vandalism and burglary spree in one upstate town. WYFF News Force Mandy Gaither is live and local. She is in Pendleton tonight. Mandy, there is some new information about this case. Right? Stand by, Mandy. Well, sources tell me just moments ago, deputies arrested a third suspect in this case, a 14-year-old. That brings the total suspects to three, that 14-year-old and two 15-year-olds. Now, there were victims on eight streets throughout Pendleton, including this home in which, which had nine windows shot out before the vandals went in and stole stuff. This door cost about $500, both these doors. Look here. To Jimmy Manley, this crime just seems senseless. Here at the American Legion in Pendleton, over two nights this week, vandals shot out the windows in their front door and didn't stop there. They came over here to get this TV or mess with it. I don't know what they were doing. Uh, but you can see the spots in it. They've ruined the TV. And uh, it's gone. The place where veterans meet once a month for food and fellowship is just one of the places targeted in a vandalism and burglary spree. Homes and cars on Lebanon, Refuge, Cherry Street, and more were also shot out. One victim had $2,000 in damage. Others, like this salon, were burglarized. Anderson County deputies confiscated these high-powered BB and pellet guns from two 15-year-olds who they say are responsible. Both are now in custody, charged with six counts of burglary and 11 counts of vandalism. I bet that they probably don't have a veteran in the family. If they do, they don't know him or her. Since the American Legion doesn't have a lot of money, Manley's unsure of how they'll replace what's been damaged, but he does have one idea. Maybe the guys that uh, did it will help pay for it. <laughs> I don't know. We can hope. Yeah, we can hope. Again, there are now three teens arrested in this case, and deputies say the investigation continues. Mandy Gaither, WYFF News 4, live in Pendleton. Mandy, thank you. Authorities in Anderson are investigating a third suspicious fire on a single street. That fire happened this morning along R Street. Investigators said the family that lived there recently moved out, so the home was vacant at the time of the fire. But this is the third fire on R Street and the eighth in that area since October 26th. Right now, no suspects have been named in connection with those fires. A family escaped a house fire this morning in Simpsonville. Take a look. Dispatchers said the fire started at about 4 this morning along Richardson Road. The house suffered heavy damage, but no one was injured in this blaze. Right now, the cause of the fire remains under investigation. Firefighters in Greenville County say a bullet came through the roof of the firehouse overnight. The assistant chief at the Belmont Fire Department says the bullet hit around midnight. Here you see the hole. Deputies believe it was fired by someone celebrating New Year's. So far, investigators don't know the type of gun or the direction the bullet might have come from. Now to Anderson County, where deputies continue to investigate a shooting there. They tell us a Pelzer woman was shot while she was lying in the bed of her home yesterday. Deputies tell us Mary Foster is still in fair condition. They tell us her husband found her just before 8 in the morning when he came back home to their home on Smythe Street. Deputies say a wallet was also taken from the house. If you know anything about this, call Crime Stoppers. The state's largest organization for autistic people and their families says Greenville police could benefit from specialized training their group offers. This after last week's controversial arrest of Tario Anderson, who has autism. WYFF News 4's Tim Waller spoke to the head of that group today. Carol Kim Thomas, executive director of the South Carolina Autism Society, said police agencies all over the state need to learn how to recognize the signs of autism. Thomas says there are certain red flags, some of which manifested themselves during the arrest of Tario Anderson. The fact that he ran, and the fact that he had trouble communicating with officers during the arrest. But Thomas says parents also need to prep their autistic children for possible encounters with law enforcement. You know, talk to them and teach them, you know, appropriate responses. If you know, you're faced with a police officer or, um, say, a fireman, to try to take that element of fear out. And Thomas says there are bracelets and necklaces 
necklaces that can be worn to let police know if a person is autistic. Thomas says she doesn't blame the arresting officers for not recognizing Anderson was autistic, but she believes they could benefit from their special training. Before the arrest of Anderson last week, the Autism Society had already planned to hold a workshop in Greenville in May for law enforcement officers. She says Anderson's arrest shows how important that training will be. Carol? Thank you, Tim. The number of people who died on South Carolina roads increased this year. The Highway Patrol reports at least 807 deaths on state roads in 2014. That's up from 762 deaths in 2013, but it is less than the previous two years. South Carolina is still seeing an increase in pedestrian deaths. Troopers say 106 people were killed on foot in 2014. It's a number that has steadily increased over the past several years. Fatalities were reported in every county of the state last year. A 12-year-old girl who survived a triple fatal crash in Anderson County continues to make strides in her recovery. Can you say Happy New Year? Good job. That video of Cheyenne Queen was taken earlier today. She still remains hospitalized more than a month after the accident. Her family says her breathing tube was recently removed and she is currently recovering from surgery. Her 17-year-old sister Amber Hope Perkins, along with Jessica Roberts and Corey Simmons, died in the wreck back on November 8th. The driver of the car that crashed into them remains behind bars. Riley McDermott is being held without bond on six felony DUI charges in connection with the crash. Today, a little girl who was badly burned in a house fire came back to her hometown. Her name is Daphne McCoy. She's nine years old. And this picture here shows the welcome she received today in Macon County, North Carolina. First responders and complete strangers lined the road. You may remember what happened to Daphne. It was back in November. She was severely burned in this house fire. Her father, Brad McCoy, died in the fire. And he was a firefighter with the Nantahala Fire and Rescue Department. He is survived by his wife and two children. Investigators believe the fire started in a wood stove in the home. During her 40 days at the Augusta Burn Center, Daphne had surgery six times. The flu may be making some news at your house. In fact, it sure is elsewhere. According to the CDC, about half the country is seeing many cases right now. According to the Centers for Disease Control, flu is widespread in 36 states, and that's expected to continue for several weeks. Many of the viruses spreading this season do differ from what's in the flu vaccine, but the CDC still says you should get the shot. If you haven't, it is not too late.